Nowadays, most of the shots you're watching in movies include visual effects, whether it is 2D or 3D. Sometimes you can't even realize that what you are seeing is generated using a computer because VFX artists are so good these days. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about the best 3D software that VFX artists and studios are currently using to make their projects. First, we're gonna talk about one of the most used software in VFX, which is SideFX Houdini, and it is actually based on procedure workflow. Artists and studios are usually tempted to choose it for making visual effects using only its powerful node-based tools in addition to scripting languages, which gives them a lot of creative freedom and power. Its node-based workflow is ideal for creating sophisticated physics simulations in addition to particle systems in a non-destructive way. This is great, especially for big projects, if they want to make changes and adjustments. For example, when creating Thor Ragnarok, Framestore Studio delve into years of experience by relying on Houdini to create effects, especially for fight sequences throughout the film. For example, the bridge being destroyed required a little bit more effort from Framestore to show different areas breaking apart throughout different shots and they used Houdini to do this progressive fracturing and simulation. Also, Double Negative was tasked to work on this particular sequence in Men in Black International, where the twins face against the film's two agents, Agent H and Agent M. The studio created the energy effect using Houdini, which came about using via a combination of particle and fluid simulations. They started first by investigating astrophotography of galaxies and nebulas. If you haven't thought about it, the difference between cosmic dust and earthly dust is the presence of millions of stars, so they tested both particle and smoke simulations and they found that they can get the details they needed with particle renders and the motion they needed from fluid simulations and they ended up with a sort of nebulous volumetric thing with tiny stars scattered around the effect taking place. Houdini, for the most part, is capable for what it is capable to achieve in physics simulations and its procedural workflows. You simply create simulation objects and apply one or more solvers in addition to forces to objects. And there are objects and solvers for different types of simulations, whether it is cloth, rigid body simulations, or fluid simulations. The least I can say is that, despite its steep learning curve and difficulty, it is probably the most powerful tool when it comes to creating next-level simulations, which is a very crucial part of the VFX field. If you are looking for a software that can help you record reaction videos, tutorials, or gameplay, you can do all that and more for free with our today's sponsors Wondershare's Demo Creator. Demo Creator is a powerful all-in-one screen recorder and video editing software, all packed into one neat little package. It is intuitive and easy to use, and the new version offers a lot of new features such as more dynamic video effects, auto caption, easy watermark customization, user interface improvements, and much more. But also with this version, you can have your own VTuber character with an AI virtual human, which will allow you to automatically track your movements and sync the facial expressions to your avatar in real time. Other features that the latest version introduced is the new webcam recording options and with this release you can switch between square and round webcam masks in addition to the ability to mirror your image and use the AI facial recognition option where you can hide the background from your recording automatically without the need for a green screen. The video editor also saw a lot of new stuff like 100 plus new transitions, more visual effects, the motion graphics, animations, a long library of audio and video effects, stickers, annotations, and so on. Furthermore, the auto caption feature, which allows you to automatically add subtitles to your videos and even render them into the video permanently. If you are interested in Demo Creator and want to try it for free, you can follow the link in the description. Autodesk Maya is another professional 3D animation, modeling, simulation, and rendering toolset that is widely utilized by VFX artists and studios for film and television alike because it was designed to serve these industries' needs in the first place. Maya actually became the film industry standard just after it was released in 1993 as it was already well placed in the market. VFX studios were switching over to Maya which was already in use at many VFX houses before the official release. Some of the companies on the list of beta testers were Cinesight, Square, Blue Sky Studios, and Ronda Graphics. Especially when it comes to animation movies, Maya has been used by several major players in the industry, such as Walt Disney Studios who made Frozen, and the 20th Century Fox Entertainment who worked on the Ice Age franchise using Maya alongside other software for sculpting and mesh cleaning such as ZBrush. 
Maya is an excellent choice when it comes to VFX work because it features different powerful and easy to use simulation and dynamics tools. It also features the N-Dynamics simulation framework to simulate everything related to cloth, particles, hair, in addition to rigid and soft bodies, but you will need third-party add-ons sometimes for more freedom and creative power when it comes to working on these simulations and effects. This software has been used as the main software in many houses and was used to produce many blockbuster movies such as Avatar or Disney's Frozen. And when it comes to VFX, Maya has everything needed to make the job done. Add to that a large number of plugins that improve the native workflow a lot. 3D Studio Max has an interesting history with Maya since before Autodesk bought Maya. The two software were actually almost doing the same job, so Autodesk started directing them in a bit of different directions. But even though Max became much more known for product design, game development and architecture, it is also used by a lot of big VFX studios and companies in their pipelines. Historically, simulations inside Max have been a little bit tricky to do, especially fluid simulations and dynamics. So studios were heavily relying on plugins such as FumeFX, Thinking Particles, Krakatoa, Frost, and RealFlow that allow artists to do amazing stuff. But during the past few years, Autodesk made Max a little bit easier and the capability of achieving stunning results much faster. Max has been used a lot over the past three decades to create amazing VFX projects. For example, during the making of Star Trek Into Darkness, Pixamondo designed the Starfleet headquarters and sent it to ILM to be able to create the effects that you can see right now. They also used 3ds Max to create the environment around the Starfleet building. In addition, they worked on the shots of the spaceship pursuit over the clouds between the skyscrapers and throughout the sci-fi city. As one of the VFX supervisors said in an interview with Area, we kept our VFX artists busy and they were able to achieve those effects successfully using plugins such as Thinking Particles and Fume Effects. Also using 3ds Max, they worked on the sequence where the Star Trek crew were running in the corridors of the spaceship Inception style. Also the sequence inside the ship's reactor that is called the Warp Engine. We can also mention Skyline VFX Studios that worked on visual effects mostly using 3ds Max for Batman vs Superman, Captain America, San Andreas, Avengers, and ILM Studios who worked on Doctor Strange, Ready Player One, Transformers, and much more. Cinema 4D is probably one of the easiest 3D software available out there, mostly known for creating really cool abstract animations and motion design. It is a 3D package that is somewhat used in big project Hollywood movies or even in short films by a smaller group of artists and creators due to its easy to use interface and powerful tracking, animation, lighting, and simulation tools. For example, it was used for creating Detective Pikachu movie. Territory Studio delivered multiple textural environmental layers using Cinema 4D. For advertising boards, two neon shop signs which helped transform London streets into a Pokemon-friendly landscape. For the CNM News Network, they created graphics including large wall screens and various monitors. For simulations inside Cinema 4D, we can mention two famous plugins that are very useful, and these are RealFlow and XParticles. RealFlow is a set of tools designed to facilitate the rendering of fluids, foam, and spray, and XParticles is a seamlessly built-in tool that enables users to render particles, splines, smoke, and fire within the software renderer. Another practical example would be when working on Guardians of the Galaxy, Territory Studio was asked by Marvel Studios to create holograms, screens, and interfaces throughout many sequences, which turned out to be great when the film was released. They were asked to create hundreds of designs and animations, with each set requiring its own look and feel to fit the vast number of sets, environments, and cultures. There were screens of spaceships, street scenes, gambling dens, communication hubs, and a prison. Each one had to reflect the specific of a particular culture, whether it was human or alien. They also needed to reflect the sense of wear and tear of function, in addition to history and backstory. Some other examples of its use in the industry is Territory VFX Studio that worked on Blade Runner 2049 and Perception Studio who worked on Doctor Strange and many more. Blender is a free and open source 3D package. It's not only a good software, but it also has a great community. It integrates the capabilities of several programs required in the VFX production workflow, such as 3D modeling, animation, effects, compositing, and video editing. 
its adoption into VFX studios is slowly but surely happening because more studios are using it year after year, whether in places where it is not completely incorporated or studios that rely on it completely, or at least they do a good chunk of their work relying on it. Probably most of you don't know that Blender was used in one of the most famous movies ever, which is Spider-Man 2, that was released in 2004. This movie was actually the first professional project that actually utilized Blender. It was mainly used for creating animatic pre-visualization for the storyboard department. When it comes to simulation and facts, Blender is well equipped with quick shortcuts, presets, and easy to use interface that allows you to create any type of simulation. For the longest time, the software relied on its own tools, and without the need of any third-party plugin, you can achieve a lot of cool stuff. But still, there are a lot of great add-ons that can be very useful in this type of work. Over the years, Blender proved itself several times in the creation of VFX projects, whether they are small or big. For example, in this movie called Hardcore Henry, Blender was used to create visual effects, action scenes animatics, in addition to making decoration sketches and many other things as well. The VFX team on this movie used an add-on called Cloud Generator to work on some scenes that include falling from the sky. They used Blender to make a cloud and drop six cameras around it representing the point of view of Henry, the hero we can see throughout his eyes as if it was a first-person shooter video game. To illuminate the scene, they used two sources of light. The first one is a sunlight and the second one is a hemisky. Blender also became an integral part of several VFX companies, such as Barnstorm VFX Studio, which uses it for modeling, animation and rendering. The company said that Blender became their favorite 3D package as it has been used as a main 3D package in projects like The Man in the High Castle, I Lost My Body, and Next Gen. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.